I'm laughing because the difference between that and the run that I've just filmed, uh, the Clemon 40, both Clemon, you know, different, a different ABV. We'll chat about what this is in a second, but the difference between them is monumentally huge. If you'd have said to me, if you'd have given those, me these two rums, not only would I not have picked them in the same style, but I just would not have picked them in for the same distillery. They are literally like night and day. This is what I pick up, and if I smelt it, I would expect Agricole to smell and taste like. But I love it. I really do. So what have we got? Let's dive into the nuts and bolts. Let's give you a little close up on that. This is the Clément Cane Bleu. Get me with my French, Cane Bleu to me and you. I'll, describe, I'll tell you exactly what that is in a second. But this is kind of like a, a premium upgrade, if you like, to uh, the normal 40 Blanc. Now, as I said in the previous video, we don't get uh, the 50 in the UK pretty much because we've got that. And you know, as far as markets goes, in the market for in for agriculture is not gonna sustain a 50% like Blanc and the 50% cane blue. It's, ju it's just not essentially. So what is this? Uh, Mastery malt prices in the UK. I haven't done the dollars, but I'm gonna try and do that in my head. 38 pounds in the UK from Master of Malt, which I think translates into what, roughly 45, 46 US dollars, which would be 44, 45 euros. Uh, so again, I'll be really interested to see price comparisons around the world. But that said, I don't know whether this is actually a worldwide release. Uh, as much as that is, you know, and I think that probably isn't as well, because I think in France, for instance, in Europe, they've probably got the 50% ABV version. So again, I don't know what's worldwide, what isn't between these, but Clément definitely is a worldwide brand. So it'll be interesting. So uh, as I said, 38 pounds in the UK. Martinique, obviously it has got the AOC on the front of the bottle. So we know it is like a proper, um, uh, Martinique rum is a proper agricole in that sense. 50% ABV, distilled from a column, obviously, uh, and it's resting in stainless steel casks for six months. So what does the Cane Bleu refer to? So the Cane Bleu is actually, and this is something we should have talked about probably in hindsight uh, earlier, way earlier in this whole rum journey, because there are lots and lots thousands of different cane varieties, uh, sugar cane varieties. Now, as I've spoken about in that Martinique video, if you go to Barbados, there is actually a rum, a cane library where they hold like over 3,000 different samples. So if there, something happens in the world, they can, they can regrow and regenerate all these different sugar cane varieties because that part of the world, you know, they don't have sugar peat. So cane is like really, you know, important for sugar. Uh, just normal sugar that you put in your tea and coffee, that sort of stuff. Whereas we've got sugar beet over this way, an abundance of it. So the cane is um, important in that sense. But what cane blur is, cane blur is a kind of variety, a species of sugar cane. But now there is another version of this that we actually get in the UK as well. And I think the last one was 2020 that it came out. But it's a blue, blue glass bottle of cane blur. And it's a single... I don't actually know of. I didn't do the research on this beforehand. I'm going to go single variety of cane blue. Feel free to uh, get on the keyboards and tell me I'm wrong in the comments below of exactly what that is. So it's definitely cane from 2020. 2020. It's definitely blue cane, blue sugar cane from 2020, which I don't know whether that makes this a blend of different cane varieties. I'm assuming, what I've naturally assumed, uh, and feel free as I say, tell me I'm wrong. What I've naturally assumed is that this is a blend of lots of different types of blue cane, whereas that blue glass bottle from 2020, that single, I'm assuming it's a single variety. Should have looked at that, shouldn't I really? Sorry, apologies. So feel free to educate me and everyone else in the comments below. Now, before I get into those magic questions, like, is it value for money? Would I restock it? Have I got anything behind a bar that's comparable? All that, let's give you some tasting notes. And um, flipping hell, flip me. This is this is like that on, on steroids. It's just inconceivable to me that it's a similar kind of product. 
as I say, if you put in agricole, if you said, right, what is that? I'm instantly going agricole. That I would have kind of got there. I would have said, well, yeah, you know, it's a bit different. It's kind of got those agricole traits. This is how I expect all agricoles to kind of smell. We've got that sort of grassy, green, herbaceous kind of-ness to it. We've got, this is where I'm going to go a little bit off piste. I, a lot of people kind of say brine, that sort of briny kind of thing. I'm actually going vinegar, but I don't mean that in a sort of uh, red or white wine that's gone off, that sort of vinegar. I'm relating that. I like my fruit vinegars on salads and stuff like that. Uh, for complete side note, I've got a fig and date. Oh, fig and date vinegar. That's really, really good. Anyway, I, I kind of love that vibe, and I get a really fruity kind of vinegar off this. Now, the fruit, I I can't help but think strawberries. I get so much strawberry off that. It is unbelievable, but it is not strawberry up in your face. It is that agricole vibe, you know. It's that vibe that many people will kind of smell and will put them off agricole. There's no getting away with that, that grassy herbaceousness. That is what it is. But you've got all this like lovely kind of fruit notes coming up behind it, and it is so... So intriguing. The other thing I will say as well, just before we dive into a taste as well, you know, the different, if I had those two side by side, I am instantly going, this one is a lot, lot stronger than that. This is burning my nostrils. 100% this is burning my nostrils. That I could smell all day. This one is like, whoo, you know, that really does give you that vibes. But I've already had a little taste, but let's, let's dive in. Up front, it's gorgeous. Strawberry. Um, a little bit of green apple, but strawberry. Almost like a little bit of like pineapple in there, but more strawberry. There's that grassy kind of vibe. There's a little bit of sort of peppery heat kind of vibe. Strawberry. Um, am I mad? Am I getting strawberry? If, you've, if you tasted this, does anyone else get strawberry? I've got, I've got strawberry in my brain. When I run my tongue around the front of my gum, citrus. More kind of a lemony citrus. That's really delicious. And it has got this kind of, as I say, this inherent agricole, I know I'm really struggling to define that at the moment. Yes, it's this grassy herbaceousness. Yes, vegetal. I can say that word now, vegetables. You know, that's a, that's a blast from the past. Vegetal notes. No mint, I'm not getting that sort of minty, fresh vibe off there. Oh, that's the, strawberry, strawberry. If you let that sit on your tongue, and just kind of, I was going to say melt, that's a stupid word, but melt over your tongue and into your, into your back of your palate, into your throat. I love sipping that neat. I really, really do. And this is the fascinating thing because obviously the Supreme upgrade to this. I know cane heads are going to come at me and go, well, that's nothing. You, you wait, there is a lot, lot better than this. But I want to emphasize, I want to get this back to cane heads. Don't forget, I love my white unaged rums by default anyway. So am I going to enjoy an aged rum as much as this? I don't know. I really don't know. The other thing I'll point out as well, you can see how much is left in that bottle. I don't think I've even done this bottle remotely close to any justice because this bottle has been purely used up in kind of cocktail tests, 15 mil in Mai Tais, that sort of stuff. I'm drinking that neat all flipping day long. That is gorgeous. So look, um, before we uh, get on to the three power questions, let's call them power questions. You know, do I think it's value for money? Would I restock it? Have I got anything behind the bar that's comparable already? Let's talk use case scenario. You hopefully should have seen, um, hopefully if this drops right, the video that I filmed about how to drink agricoles, how you can drink them. Um, but obviously, hopefully, you would have seen the tea ponch video as well. So we have done a tea ponch, and I can, um, you can see, a little bit of citrus. Let's go back to the main camera. A little bit of citrus, kind of knife, lele stick there. I can confirm. Oh, this is, oh, this is good. This, to me, amps that strawberry up, that citrus up. I just used um, normal sort of sugar in there instead of the demerara sugar that I used in the main video. Oh, I think I need to get into tea ponches. Oh, that is absolutely gorgeous. What that ever so slight touch of citrus does, lime, is elevate that short. I don't know whether I'm bonkers now. I really don't. Strawberry. 
I've said it like a hundred times. It's it's strawberry. Oh, I want to do daiquiris with it. I want to do God knows what. Look, how would you drink this rum? Me now, I think it's actually a crying shame to actually drink it any other way than neat or in a tea punch. But yes, it's got that big, heavy, bolshy vibe, agricole vibe that you might want to twist up some cocktails. So it's going to work there. I, I wouldn't go a ginger ale. I wouldn't go a cola with that. Definitely won't. I think that's a crying shame. I think that's a waste. However, your more delicate mixes, uh, Stratford sodas, yes, I pretty much guaranteeing that all of those are going to work. Maybe not the spice, actually. I should have done. I should have got. I haven't even got any in the fridge, actually. Um, but the citrus, the tropical, and I think the hedgerow would work amazingly well with that. I'm not overly convinced about the spice because I don't think ginger ale with that. But then your fever trees as well. The Mexican lime uh, in yuzu, definitely, 100% with that. Um, what else? Apple, probably not so much. Um, a pink grapefruit, definitely would kind of go with that. Really nice vibe. But let's get into those power questions. Do I think it's value for money? What was it? 38, 38 pounds? Where are we? 30, 38 pounds. So 45, 46 dollars. US dollars, 44, 45 euros. Again, I think prices are probably slightly hyped because agricole isn't, you know, isn't a bigger deal. Do I think that's nearly a 40 pound rum in the UK? You know, 30, well, we sort of 45, 46 dollar rum in the US. I'm not overly convinced by that. I'm not overly convinced, but the hypocritical side of me is like, I'm, I'm buying a bowl. I'm 100% I'm restocking that. I'm 100% drinking that. From this point on, it's tea ponches. There, there was not even a shadow of doubt in my mind. And again, I want to emphasize this point as well, because this is like video two, rum two, in this journey of agricole. Yes, I've tasted a lot of these agricoles before. Um, but I haven't looked at them in this way now. Certainly haven't given them much love neat, if you like. So this is a whole new journey for me. And I've started off at entry level. I dare say there are going to be a way, way better white unaged agricoles for me to go down before I even get into the aged. But do I, have I got anything behind the bar that's comparable? Well, you know, rum number two, you could say, let's go back to the main camera, rum number two, or rum number one, rum number two, yes. Are they comparable? Yes. Would I, if you, if you if I could have one, which one would I have? That one, 100% over that. This is tasty. Would I, would I restock it? God, yeah. This is gorgeous. 